Golden State is a big topic. Draymond is due back um, any day now. Um, let's start there. Um, you know, he's been out for, man, three weeks maybe, 12 games, 13 games. Uh, we know Bob Myers stepped away at the beginning of this season. Um, Jonathan Kaminga calls out Steve Kerr. There's just a lot of shit going on over there. What do you kind of make of all this, first and foremost? Let me, let's me let start with Draymond. Well, I mean, we all, everybody wants a teammate like Draymond. Let me, just let me say that. You know, a guy that has your back, um, a guy that, that's, gonna, that's loyal and that's going to ride for you at all times, and sometimes loyal to a fault because I've been that guy. So I love that I love that type of teammate where people say you're a problem, but they love when you love you at the same time. So I get Draymond, but at the same time, I think a lot of that comes from his lack of production, right? I mean, like if if he was doing other things besides just besides just like making a good pass here and now and then, or or actually getting into it with somebody, he really not doing nothing on the court. You know what I'm saying? He's not a, he's not a great three-point. This is not a diss to him. He's not he's just not a great point shooter. This is the facts. He's not a great three-point shooter. They're not dropping it to him to, to ISO him on the so so if he's not really just making an impact on defense or making good passes, he's really not doing nothing in the game. So I think sometimes that come from comes from frustration of him not being able to affect the game the way he wants to, you know, offensively or defensively. So um I I I think that's what causes his his frustration, but like like I just said, Greg Popovich said all the time, the only way you're going to win the championship is you have a guy like J Draymond Green, like Steven Jackson, like Ron Artest. You need a guy like that to win the championship. But at the same time, I, th I think me and Ron Artest were way better offensively than Draymond, way better offensively. And we did more on both ends of the court. And like I said, this is not a diss to him. I just think that sometimes he wants to impact the game in other ways, and he's just not able to. And, and he lashes out the wrong way. But I, I love him as a teammate. I, I, take, I take all his faults on my team because I know nine out of ten times we're going to win with it. Yeah, I mean, it's just an interesting situation. You know, obviously their talks is, is this dynasty done as the window shut? You're hearing all kinds of different things. But then also take it a step further with the Draymond situation. Like, we don't really ever know what's going on in people's personal life. You right. know what I mean? I was on edge going through a divorce when I played for the Clippers. And Doc Rivers said some shit wrong to me, and I was ready to whoop his ass. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you just never really know what people are going through, you know? So, you know, when during this time, I, you know, I was checking in with bro and, you know, I don't want nothing, man. Just letting you know I love you. I'm here checking in. Sometimes he responds, sometimes he doesn't. But I think you definitely have to wrap your arms around someone like him because that same mentality has helped this team get four championships. You know what I mean? This team, mm -hmm. as great as they were with Steph and you had KD, Clay, they don't win. To me, in my personal opinion, with all due respect to the greatness, they don't win shit without Draymond because I was in there. He's the heartbeat no of not question. only that team but that franchise overall. Um, another topic that kind of came to it um, that Draymond that team addressed. team is tissue without Draymond. Yeah, the, the, something that Draymond addressed uh, yesterday when he came back and spoke on his show. Shout out to bro. He just got a new deal with the volume. Um, he spoke about Stephen A. Smith um, da or, uh, doubting – I don't even know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the word is, but he was kind of critiquing Steph's leadership, and Draymond took a huge offense to that. Um, Stephen A. said something to the effects of, you know, if this was LeBron, we'd be crestling LeBron. Has, has, has Steph lost the locker room? What's Steph doing? How come Steph's not doing that? How come Steph's not doing this? And I think it's wrong. And today, Stephen A. Smith tried to come back and say he didn't, but, you know, he insinuated that Steph didn't have the locker room. And I feel like, Jack, and you know, well, we're the same type of players – Draymond would have did this shit with LeBron. Draymond would have did this shit with MJ. Draymond would have did this shit with Kobe. Draymond is going to be Draymond, just like we're going to be us. So to try to point the finger and say it's Steph's fault or how come Steph hasn't – we don't know what Steph has and hasn't been doing. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, I know Dre and Steph have a lot of love for each other. They communicate often. And I like that Draymond called Stephen A out because you took a shot at Steph and then you brought LeBron in the conversation when you didn't even need to. You know what I mean? So yep. you're creating a narrative about does Steph have the locker room or not? Is he a leader or not? And then trying to trump that with bringing LeBron into the situation. So I just love this new media and, and, and guys are able to call the bullshit on the spot, not let it fester, not let the narrative of just the media live out there. Like we have our platforms and we're able to talk too. So I was glad he, you know, he 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 called out Stephen A because I think Stephen A was wrong. You know, he didn't directly say that Steph is a bad leader, but you're insinuating that under LeBron's watch this shit wouldn't happen. And like I said, LeBron or, <laughs> Dre is Dre. He's gonna be Dre no matter who is around. And I think pointing or blaming someone else or insinuating it's someone else's fault to keep him in line is, is wrong. 
Championship team or struggling team, Draymond gonna be the the the, the, the head of that locker room. Mm -hmm. That's just the personality we have. But to on a, on a, I'm gonna I'm a touch on something else for uh, people that never had experience or never played an NBA game. This is for you. I played for the San Antonio Spurs. Tim Duncan was our best player. He didn't have the locker room. David Robinson, Kevin mm -hmm. Willis had the locker room. I played in uh, Golden State. BD was our best player, but BD didn't have the locker room. Me and Matt had the locker room. Uh, and, and even Jay Rich. I played in Charlotte where I was the best player. I didn't have the locker room. Jill Wallace had the locker room. Mm. So so I've been I've been on different teams where it's never the best player have the locker room. It's always it's always the guy that's the heart of the team. The guy that 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 that's willing to put his life on the line. The guy that walking how he talking. That's normally the guy that has the locker room. So for guys that's never been in that locker room, that's some news for you. The mm. best player is never the person that has the locker room. Mm. Sometimes, but sometimes it isn't. Every situation is different, but I agree with you 1,000%. Sometimes it's not always the best player because sometimes the best player isn't a vocal guy, such as Steph. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean he don't have respect. He has respect, but like you said, it, it's other. Draymond has that locker room. And I think, you know, obviously dating back to the, the pool punch, I think he lost that locker room. And he and I discussed it during the playoffs last year in Sacramento where he felt like he couldn't really be himself because he had to earn everyone's respect back in the locker room to really be himself. So it's been ugly over there. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I fuck with all those guys. It, it, you know, Bob got out at the right time. Boy, Bob is sitting on ESPN, and he just got a job with the commanders hiring their next head, or, you know, either management or head coach or something. So Bob jumped ship at the right time. I just, you know, pray that everything lands safely and, and, and on their feet. And I think that Steve Kerr is coming to the end of his run. I think he's stressed out. He got more grays and more wrinkles than I ever recall him having. And I think this run mm -hmm. has been a lot on him, man. This has been nine, ten years of greatness, struggles, drama, championships. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, in the next year or two, three, maybe that Steve Kerr just respectfully steps back and takes a break. Because, you know, I love Steve, and I think all this shit has been a lot on him. Which leads me to our next topic, Jonathan Kaminga. A young up and coming star calls out Steve Kerr in the media. Uh, Jack, when we first came in the league, you late 90s, me early 2000s, if a young player called out a coach publicly, what would have happened? Nine out of ten times his ass was going to be gone that week. He's gonna, <laughs> they going to release him. He's going to be in uh, back back when I was, it was the uh, C, uh, not the C, it was the CBA. Your ass was going to be in the CBA. You weren't going to be playing nowhere around the NBA. And then, then again, on your way out, one of them vets was going to pull you to the side on the way out and be like, say, look, young fella, don't ever do no shit like that again. This is, your, you know what I'm saying? And give you some game and jack you up right quick. So uh, it, it, it's different these days, man. Yeah. I'm telling you. It, 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 and, and you wonder why Draymond act the way he do. Because look at the shit they dealing with in the league now. You know what I'm saying? These, these young players play when they want to. They say what they want. They do what they want. Like, it's a, it, it, it's a lot going on. You know what? More than I think about it, I'll be acting like Draymond, too. I'll be running around choking <laughs> niggas in the game and doing Be frustrated, too, dog. Because watching this shit is frustrating. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's watching is frustrating. But, Kaminga, you do not have the right, bro. I, I love you as a player, a young talent. But you do not have the right to even speak on – Mm -mm. The Hall of Fame coach, Hall of Fame player, uh, Steve Kerr. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Show him more respect and go to him in private and let him know how you feel. But I don't think – I don't even think you at that point. I think you at the point where you talk to Draymond and tell Draymond how you feel, try to correlate, the, correlate mm. that through coach. I don't even think you have the – you know what I'm saying? Mm. To be honest, that's how, that's how I would play it. Yeah. No, I agree. And – I think this was a mistake on Kaminga's part. Um, Steve Kerr is one of a the, the, one of the most open door policy type coach. But even to take a step further, you talk to your OGs. You know what I mean, and, and, and listen to see what they have to say. And you know, although Kaminga is playing well and he's been waiting for his time, and you know his, his time is now. Obviously, they got. I think Kaminga's play has Wiggins on the trading block. Uh, but yeah, you don't, you, young fella, you don't do that in public. Um, obviously, frustration, and it's just a different time. People are speaking their mind across several fronts. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's right, but in this particular team sport, you know, you got to go talk to either your coach or you talk to, to, to your star players because you definitely don't throw that out there, especially with all the other bullshit swirling around the team now too. So yep. uh, he'll, he'll learn from it. Uh, again, we, you know, we both agree, tremendous talent. This kid is 6'10", and has it all. So I'm excited to see his growth. I just think he made a small mistake. He probably regrets it, but uh, you know, he's got to keep moving forward.